introduce our first speaker. He's a particle physics postdoc at the University of Michigan. Let's have a big round of applause for Brian Wett. All right, is this thing on? Yep, you can hear me? Yeah. Great. So as nerds, we are living in an incredible time. Because right now, right now, science is more awesome than it's ever been before in history. Woo! Yeah, right? Woo! The Large Hadron Collider, officially the best thing ever. <laughs> I'm not an engineer right now. We live in a world where you can give people genes on Facebook. <laughs> but what I want to focus on here tonight is how we tell stories about science. And we see science all the time. We see science stories all the time. Um, you can download any number of free podcasts that can explain any scientific fact to you for free. Even every day on TV, we see shows that feature science prominently, from CSI to the Big Bang Theory. And these shows portray science in a positive and humorous light. So I claim that it's useful to think of the two kinds of science stories that we see out there today. And I'm going to call those kinds of stories external and internal. From my point of view, an external story is the kind of story that focuses on the way the world works. It's not a story about people. It's a story about things. It's a story about how the universe is put together. Maybe a fictional universe, but there you go. The next kind of story I'm going to call internal. And this is a story that focuses on people. It's not about the things in the world. It's about the people and their internal emotional journeys through that world, how they interact with it, and how they develop as human beings. And I think when you divide stories into these two categories, you can see that there's a real opportunity to do something exciting with the way we tell science stories. So one kind of story we see a lot is what I'm going to call external true story. These are just true stories about how science works. We saw those podcasts, and there's any way, any number of ways of learning about science. There's also what I'm calling an internal fiction story. These are just characters living in some world, like characters living in a science fiction world, or nerd characters, or Denise Richards as a nuclear physicist. <laughs> <laughs> there's also this cool subgenre that's developing now of what I'm calling external fiction. These are like little mock documentaries about science. And the best example, which you should all check out, <coughs> is this British TV series, Look Around You, which is hysterical. And even The Onion has fake science stories all the time, making fun of quantum mechanics and stuff like that. But what I don't see out there too much right now is what I'm going to call internal true story. In other words, a true personal story about how people interact with science. And this is why my friend Ben and I put together this project that we're calling the Story Collider. And the goal of the Story Collider is to get as many people as possible to share with us their true personal stories about science and how it changed their lives. Our goal is to get as many different types of people as possible to tell us these stories, not just scientists, but scientists and actors, comedians, singers, firemen, ballerinas, whatever. People from all walks of life to share with us their true stories about science. Our main venue for this at the moment is we host a monthly show in Brooklyn. We're both particle physicists and storytellers, although Ben has since left physics for the lucrative career of storytelling. <laughs> <laughs> and he does this full time now. But we host this show in Brooklyn, and we get people to come up on stage in this little bar, which is also kind of a hub for storytelling, and tell stories like you might hear on This American Life or The Moth, true stories about science and how it shaped their world. <coughs> We've been lucky enough to get all different kinds of people at these shows. We had a geophysicist who works at the Museum of Natural History to tell us about his search for what he thought was Atlantis. We had a burlesque dancer talk about being encouraged to get a double mastectomy, and a med student who had some dude chuck a salivary gland at her face. <laughs> we had a friend of mine who's a science fiction author talk about his best friend, the oceanographer, and how their friendship developed through this guy's graduate career. And a science journalist who went on a fossil dig with a fundamentalist Christian. <laughs> <laughs> Each show is centered around a theme that runs the gamut from physics to math, to biology, to chemistry, to psychology, anything in science. And what we're excited about right now is we're spreading these stories outside of the New York area by virtue of a podcast which is actually just launching this week. And every week, we're going to bring you a new, true story about science. So I want to close here tonight by saying that you guys are all dorks. <laughs> and you all have a story someplace in your life that science affected you, that it changed you 
someplace that science made you a better person or a worse person. And I want to encourage everybody here to come talk to us and share with us their true personal story about science and how it changed your life.